Well, hello everyone. So in today's lecture, we are to study this topic, projectile motion. I'm sure a lot of you are struggling with uh, the concepts, the equations, and the underlying problems as far as this topic is concerned. But after this session, I'm sure you should be able to deal with this topic with a much greater amount of ease. So where are we beginning from? Let's look at uh, this particular scenario. Where we are in a two-dimensional frame now. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, right? So nothing very different. x-axis is the horizontal plane. Uh, so you are standing right now, uh, look at the ground, imagine x-axis is the horizontal plane and y-axis is the vertical plane, right? So if we throw a ball from this point and this point, I am fixing it to be the origin, right? 0, 0. I am I'm throwing a vertical body or a ball, anything uh, from this particular point with some initial velocity u. Right, there is an initial velocity which this particular ball has, that is u. So what we have already noticed or like a lot of times when uh, you throw a particular ball or something, you would have noticed that this particular ball takes this path, this trajectory. This is called the trajectory of the ball, right. And uh, what we will see that this trajectory is actually a parabola, right. So parabola is a mathematical shape. This particular trajectory takes this shape and we will see as to why that happens, right. So, uh, we are to solve this particular motion. Remember, projectile motion is nothing but 2D kinematics. It is nothing but what? 2D kinematics. And why is it 2D kinematics? Because it's dealing with two dimensions. One is your x-axis and the other is your y-axis. Now, if I were to state all of this, uh, all what happens in this particular motion in one sentence, uh, the gist of this entire thing, I would state it in one line and that is perpendicular directions. are independent. If you remember this one line, I'm, I'm sure uh, you should be able to deal with this topic with a much greater amount of ease. Not just this topic, there are a lot of topics in physics which keep coming and all of them apply the same concept called perpendicular directions are independent. What does that mean? If I have two directions, x and y axis and they are mutually perpendicular uh, to, each, to each other, what happens in the x-axis will have no effect on y-axis. What happens on the y-axis will have no effect on the x-axis. That is what it means. Let's see how we can apply that to our equations that we are to write now. So, uh, what you already know is uh, there is gravity acting downwards, right? The gravity is a form of an acceleration in the downward direction. That is your g bar, right? And that's present throughout the space. I'm just drawing an arrow here, but that's present throughout uh, the vertical space. And there is nothing present in the horizontal space. There must have been, like in, in our real life scenarios, what we have is known as, what, what we have is air resistance, but we are ignoring air resistance as far as this particular case is concerned. So remember, we are ignoring air resistance, right? And we are just going ahead with gravity. That is the only force or the only external, gravitational force is the only external force that we are taking into consideration as far as this particular projectile motion is concerned. So let's see what all can happen here. So let's deal with x direction separately. So to deal with x direction, this initial velocity vector, it's a vector, it has to be split in its x and y direction. So how do we split a vector? You have a velocity vector, so let's say it is making an angle theta with the horizontal. This is your vector, u bar, it's making an angle theta with the horizontal. So this is the ux or the x directions uh, component and this is the uy or the y directions component. How do you get ux and uy? Uh, basically sin theta is nothing but your uy divided by u and cos theta is nothing but your ux divided by u. Sorry, it's, it's, not, it's not uy bar, it's u bar. So what you need is ux bar. So ux bar is nothing but u bar cos theta, right? Or what I can say is it's nothing but u cos theta i cap. I can split u bar as u i cap, right? Because i cap is the unit vector along the x axis and j cap is the unit vector along the y axis. If I multiply the magnitude with the unit vector, I'll get the vector in that direction, right? So u cos theta i cap is my x uh, direction's velocity. Now let's say that the body was present here at this point which is denoted by x, y. So just, just the way you have a 0, 0 here, this point is having the coordinates x, y. And let's say it took a time t. It took a time t to reach this x, y. At t equal to 0, it was here. 
and after that MP, it has least x y. Our job in this particular scenario is to only get the relation of x y with respect to t, right? Or in fact, uh, because we want a trajectory, we need we need the relation of y with respect to x, and for that we we'll make use of this parameter called time, right? Let's see how we can do that. So how do you get the x coordinate? X coordinate is nothing but how far it has gone horizontally. Now imagine horizontal motion. What all is happening here? There is a u x velocity. Is there any acceleration in the horizontal direction? No. I've already told you. Ignore air resistance. There is only a velocity in the horizontal direction, and in a time t, in a time t, this u x is taking it forward, right? So it is nothing but speed equal to distance by time. Just that formula. Speed equal to distance by time. So what is my distance here? My distance in the horizontal is nothing but the x, uh, is basically the x coordinate. And what is my time here? It's t. And what is my speed here? Speed is nothing but u x, right? U x, u x mod, which is nothing but u cos theta, right? So it is nothing but u cos theta. So from here I can get what x is. X is u cos theta into t, right? So I got the x relation with respect to time. So remember, all of this is the x directions motion that is completely independent of what will happen in y because perpendicular directions are independent. So let's look at uh, y directions motion now. So we will we'll now look at y direction. So yeah, in y direction, let's see what all is happening. You have a u y velocity, initial velocity upwards. You have a gravity which is decelerating this u y. This u y was Huge in the beginning, and as the body, as the time progresses, gravity will make sure that this ui decreases because gravity is the acceleration here, which is in the downward direction, and this is the velocity, right? So acceleration is opposing velocity, so ui will keep decreasing. That's why it will keep going up, it will keep going up, but at a certain point, it won't be able to go up further because ui at this point, at the topmost point here, ui will become zero, right? So uh, let's see what we can do here. So ui uh, is what you have, g is what you have, so. Which equation of motion will you use here? If you need the, what you know is uh, it is at a height y, right? So you know the vertical displacement. You know the displacement. You know the velocity. You know g. You know time. Which equation of motion will you use to relate them? Well, it's the second equation of motion, right? So distance, which is displacement, basically y, and because y is in the upward direction, so I'll put a y plus, right? Uh, or a plus y, rather, not a y plus, plus y. Is equals to plus u y into t because u y is upwards positive, right? Plus half. What is that acceleration? Acceleration is downwards. G, right? So you do the minus g into t square. Don't get confused with this equation. It's coming from the second equation of motion, right? Wherein you know the acceleration, you know the initial velocity, and you know the displacement, you know the time as well, right? So this is this is what you relate to. So from here you can get y is equals to U y, and your U y is nothing but you can get from here from this particular equation. U y is U sine theta, right? If I just need the magnitude, it's U y equal to U sine theta. If I need it in the vectorial form, U y bar is equal to U bar into sine theta, right? So uh, this is U sine theta into t. Uh, you can move this plus now. It's minus half g t square. So you know x with respect to time. You know y with respect to time, right? You know x coordinates relation with time. You know y coordinates relation with time. If you can eliminate time from these two equations, you'll get the equation of y with respect to x, and that is what our intention is. So how will we do that? From here, in this equation, you get t is equals to x by u cos theta. That's your first equation. In this first equation, you'll put it in put in the second equation. So I will say one into shall give me this. So if I put this here, we'll get a y is equals to u sine theta into t is nothing but x by u cos theta. So we have x by u cos theta minus half g. And once again, your t is nothing but x square by u square cos square theta. So from here, what I can do is I can cancel out this u. So I'll get a y is equals to tan theta into x. Minus half g by u square. See, cos square theta can go up, and I can write it as secant square theta into x square. This is the equation of y with respect to x, right? 
what is this? How does how does this look like? If I write it in this form, it's nothing but y is equals to a x square plus b x plus c. It is in this form, right? Where your c is zero, your c is zero. That's why there is no constant in this equation. And your a, which is the coefficient of x square, so this is x square. And this whole thing, if I write write a plus and this this whole thing in the bracket is the a. That nothing but uh, the coefficient of x square, right? So that is if that is less than zero. If the coefficient of x square is less than zero. First of all, this is a parabola. Y equal to x square plus b x plus c mathematically is a parabola. And on top of that, if your a is less than zero, then your parabola will be downwards, right? That is why you have a downward parabola which results out of this motion. What are a few other things that we can see as far as a few other formulas from which are useful from this particular topic? How do you get the maximum height? If you want to know how far it has gone upwards, how do you get that? Well, uh, so what you can do here is uh, in this particular equation. In this equation, uh, or rather, uh, you can just use the third equation of motion uh, in the y direction, right? So, if you use the third equation of motion, it's nothing but v square minus u square is equals to two a s, something like that, right? So, v square is the final velocity. So, final y velocity here will be zero. Final y velocity here will be zero. So, uh, v y, which is your final y velocity, square. Uh, Minus u y, which is your initial y velocity, is equals to two into acceleration is g downwards. So you'll have a minus g into s is nothing but h, right? Maximum height. So how will you get that? So uh, u y. This is u y by the way. This is sorry v y. So it is zero minus u y square is nothing but you have a u y here. U square sine square theta. We have u square sine square theta is equals to minus two g. So from here you can get h, and that is nothing but u square sine square theta by 2g. This is the formula for this is the formula for maximum height that's attained by this particular projectile motion. And how do you get this? This is called as the range. Like if you start from zero zero, the point where this projectile lands, the coordinates of that will be r comma zero, right? Where your r is nothing but the range of the projectile motion, not the maximum horizontal displacement covered by this particular motion. How will you get that? Well, in this particular equation, if you put y equal to zero, there are two instances. This is the whole path, right? There are two points where your y is zero. One is your initial, and one is your final, because these are the points on the x-axis. So here is where your y is zero. So if you put x equal to zero here, you'll put you'll get two roots for y, right? Uh, uh, two solutions for y. Uh, sorry, if you put y equal to zero, if you put y equal to zero, you get two solutions for x. One is x equal to zero, that is this, and the other is x equal to r. So if we need r, what we do is we put y equal to zero here. So if you put y equal to zero, you get tan theta into x minus half g secant square theta by u square x square is equal to zero, right? So if I if I remove the root x equal to zero because I already know that I don't need that I need x equal to r so I'll remove x right so the second x the second root that I'll get that is x equals to u square sine two theta by g solve it we'll get that uh, basically just just take tan theta right side secant square theta here in the denominator it will cancel and you'll get the final solution that you'll get is or let me actually solve it for you. Uh, you'll have x equals to uh, if you send tan theta that side minus two tan theta into u square divided by. In fact, the minus will get cancelled when tan theta goes there. So you'll have two uh, u square tan theta divided by g secant square theta, right? So tan theta is nothing but sine theta by cos theta, right? Secant square theta is cos square theta upwards. Cos square theta and cos theta will get cancelled. You'll have two sine theta cos theta in the numerator, which is your sine theta, right? So u square sine theta by g. This solve it, you'll get it. So this is my x, but this x is nothing but r, right? So range, this horizontal maximum displacement. The formula for that is nothing but u square sine two theta. This is not sine square theta. This is sine two theta divided by g. That's your range. And if you want to know. For how long was it in the air, or the time of flight? That means from here to here, how much time did it take? Right. If you want to know that, then what will you do? In this equation, you just put x equal to r. If you put x equal to r, you get the maximum time, which is the time of flight. So once you put the time of flight here, uh, you'll get the formula for time of flight as 2u sine theta divided by g. Just put it and verify. So these are the three important formulas, and this underlying concept that perpendicular directions are independent. 
With this, we complete all the subtopics that were a part of this particular topic called projectile motion. I hope you found this session informative. Thanks for watching.